Why the Narcissist Has an Affair. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Narcissists commonly, but not always, have affairs. Some narcissists may have a series of intimate relationships outside of their relationship or marriage, essentially one-night stands with a variety of different people, but wouldn't be described as an affair. The narcissist has their intimate partner primary source. This individual was once idolised, but, and this always happens, there's no way of avoiding it, they will then enter what is known as a sustained devaluation. When you have become embedded as the intimate partner primary source to a narcissist and you are in the golden period, the narcissist will not cheat on you. This is because there is no need and you are seen as so wonderful, so amazing, you remain painted white, that the narcissism would not allow the narcissist to cheat on you because that would damage control of you. And, as you know, the narcissist is governed in his interactions with other people by the prime aims, control, fuel, character traits and residual benefits. Thus, when you're painted white and you're embedded as that intimate partner, primary source during the golden period, the narcissist will not cheat on you. You are meeting all of the narcissist's needs. You're under control. You're pumping out oodles of potent, nutritious, edifying fuel. Your character traits are numerous and advantageous, and there are various residual benefits the narcissists are obtaining from you. Thus, the narcissism is delighted with you. You are the best of the best. However, this state of affairs does not last, and eventually you will enter the sustained devaluation. This might be, at first, the receipt of the stranger zone, where the narcissist isn't actually treating you particularly badly, but the shine has gone off things. They don't seem as interested in you, they don't seem as involved, and you might just put it down to the honeymoon period having ended, not realising what's actually going on. Not every dynamic between narcissist and intimate partner primary source has this strange zone. Sometimes you're thrust into the more prominent devaluation. There, you start to experience various differing manipulations dependent upon the type of narcissist you're with, which range from physical and sexual violence, being ignored, being glared at, being put down, invalidated, belittled, subjected to circular conversations, having ill health used against you, made to feel guilty, being provoked and projected upon, repeatedly being blame-shifted to. There are many, many different types of manipulations. And amongst all of that poor treatment also comes the issue of infidelity. There are differing types of infidelity, emotional, intellectual, financial, but the one that is focused on the most is the physical, the intimate, the sexual. Some narcissists go and have sex with other people and the intimate partner primary source never knows about it, but that's still devaluing behaviour. Sometimes the narcissist is cheating and the intimate partner primary source suspects it but can't prove it. That is still devaluation. In some instances, the narcissist is blatant about it. Even being caught. Even being caught with somebody else. Being seen kissing somebody in a bar. Being caught in bed with somebody else. And in some instances, even seeking to involve the intimate partner primary source in the infidelity. I recall a client of mine that I was advising whereby her husband would be bringing women back to the house and having sex with them under the same roof as her and in some instances encouraging her to engage in a threesome and sometimes she did it. I successfully enabled her to escape that particular entanglement and she's a number of years no contact and divorced from her husband. It is the sexual infidelity that is the one that people focus on the most. As I mentioned, some narcissists will go off and have sex with different people, but then there are other narcissists that will engage in undertaking an affair, 
whereby they start having sexual relations with another person who becomes an intimate partner secondary source, either of the shelf variety or quite often as a dirty little secret. And the narcissist sees them repeatedly and regularly, and thus an affair occurs. These affairs can go on for years. But why is it that the narcissist conducts the affair? Why is it that they engage in that behaviour by being unfaithful to the intimate partner primary source? And why is it that they keep going back to the same person for the purposes of conducting the affair? Well, if you were to ask the narcissist, why did you have an affair? You would be met by a multiplicity of answers, some of which contain a grain of truth, which I'll explain later, and many of them are completely misleading. You might be told, we were broken, or you weren't giving me any love. You've put on weight. I felt unappreciated. We weren't having sex anymore. You seem to have gone off me. You were not meeting my needs. I was bored. It's not love, it's just sex with this person. I can't help it. I don't know why I did it. They made me feel good. You've changed. She's interested in me and you're not. Many of these explanations have no bearing on what was actually going on in the relationship and therefore are revisions of history. In some instances, they might be based upon some problems that have arisen in the relationship between the narcissist and the intimate partner primary source and thus have threatened the sense of control that the narcissist subconsciously requires. Nevertheless, when the victim asks the narcissist why they've had an affair when that victim has found out about that, the truth-seeking victim wants to understand why is it that you've cheated on me and why did you keep choosing that person? Am I not enough? What's so good about them that you kept going to them and not me? The fact is that the answer that the narcissist will give will not bring closure or any form of relief to the victim because it isn't the actual truth as to why the narcissist has done what they have done. In some instances, it's nowhere near the truth at all, and the answer only serves to confuse the victim as they try to reconcile it with the facts as they know it to be. He said that we weren't having sex anymore, but we were. We were having it three times a week. I don't understand. Did he want more than that? Was I not doing the things that he wanted in the bedroom? I don't get it. In other instances, there is a degree of truth. Yes, we weren't having sex as often as we once did, but we still were, and I thought it was good. Did he think that it wasn't? Yes, I know I've put a bit of weight on, but that shouldn't be a reason to go and cheat on me. After all, I'm still the same person. I still love him. I still look after him. I still do all of the things in terms of looking after the children, holding down a job, running a house, etc. So why would he cheat? And of course, what the victim is doing is making the classic mistake of trying to understand the narcissist's behaviour through their own world lens, rather than realising they need to look at it through the lens of the narcissist. The simple reason why the narcissist has cheated is because that intimate partner primary source is in the sustained devaluation, which means the narcissism says there's no reason not to cheat. The narcissist has no emotional empathy, so they don't care about the impact that it might have upon their spouse. Yes, some narcissists behave in a more covert fashion so that they keep the affair hidden. That's not done out of concern for hurting the spouse or the boyfriend or the girlfriend or the cohab or the partner. It's done to avoid affecting control over that individual because, of course, if the spouse learns what's going on, they will kick off, they will erupt, and thus there's a threat to control. Thus, keeping the affair hidden is about serving the narcissist's needs vis-a-vis -vis control of the intimate partner primary source and also over the affair partner. 
The intimate partner primary source having entered sustained evaluation essentially means that the gloves come off in relation to the ability to cheat. There's nothing to stop the narcissist from doing so. No emotional empathy, no painted white, for the victim has now become painted black. And thus, if opportunity knocks, the narcissist will go elsewhere. Thus, the golden period would prevent the narcissist from cheating, but that has gone. There's no other shackle on the narcissist's behaviour. And because the narcissist's needs are paramount, if the narcissist needs to get the prime aims from someone else by sleeping with them and thus cheating on their current spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, etc., then they are allowed to do so, because the narcissism does not deem that there is anything getting in the way. And thus, the reason that the narcissist cheats is because, one, there is nothing that is stopping them from doing so. Two, you're in the sustained devaluation, which means you as the intimate partner primary source are seen as faulty, meaning that there may now be the necessity of searching for your replacement because you are deemed to be a faulty appliance. And three, the prime aims might be needed to be obtained elsewhere because you're not catering to them as much as you once did. For example, you will still be under control or largely under control, but it might be that you're repeatedly threatening that control, making it more difficult to maintain the relationship with you. More usually, it's the case that your fuel, having become stale, and thus you've shifted to devaluation, you might not be providing it as often as you once did, not necessarily on purpose, but as a consequence of the way that you're being treated. And thus, you are no longer as an attractive prospect to the narcissist because your fuel output has dropped. It might be that your residual benefits aren't being provided as often as they once were. It might be that the pleasure that's obtained from sex has been reduced because you're not having sex as often. It might be that you're not doing as many things for the narcissist as you once did. Thus, you aren't catering to the prime aims in the way that you once were. Therefore, this causes the narcissist to look elsewhere to supplement the deficiency that has arisen in relation to you. Even if you might still be pumping out the fuel and still be under control and still providing character traits and still providing residual benefits to a similar level as you did in the golden period, the fact that you're now painted black because you're in the sustained devaluation means you're still viewed as unreliable, traitorous and treacherous by the narcissist, even though nothing has actually changed. All that happened was that there was the shift from the golden period to the sustained devaluation, which is usually caused by your fuel becoming stale. Thus, the narcissist looks to invigorate it once again, by seeking negative fuel more often than positive fuel. Accordingly, you enter the sustained devaluation, and either because you start to not provide those prime aims as effectively as once did, or you continue to do the same, but because you're painted black, the narcissist deems that it's appropriate, subconsciously, to go and seek somebody else. Invariably, it isn't about punishment. It's actually about serving the narcissist's needs. And you just happen to suffer as a consequence of that because the narcissist is cheating on you. The narcissist is not thinking, I'll go and have an affair to show that bitch. But rather, the narcissist has an affair for reasons that the narcissism tells him to have an affair. And the actual reason behind it all is to cater for the diminished prime aims or simply to start looking for your replacement because you have entered the sustained devaluation and aren't deemed to be appropriate any longer. Thus, the narcissist looks elsewhere. 
the narcissist finds a suitable prospect. And that person becomes the intimate partner secondary source because they're having sex with this person. They might be talking about their hopes and fears to this person. They might be spending money on this person. And the narcissism recognizes that this person is potentially a decent replacement for you as the intimate partner primary source and therefore deems that the interaction isn't a one-off, but rather that the narcissist should start to think that this person is amazing and wonderful. They now have a golden period. The narcissist is interacting with them intermittently. The narcissist can, of course, return to you as the intimate partner primary source and give you a respite period, treats you well, has sex with you, takes you to nice places. Intermittently, they're keeping in contact with the affair partner, messaging them behind your back. And then they go and see them as you become painted black again and they remain painted white. They take them off the shelf and interact with them. And the reason that they keep selecting that person isn't because they're necessarily better looking than you, more sexually attractive than you, cleverer than you, better off financially than you. Indeed, in some instances, they, you may actually deem that they're less attractive than you, not as intelligent as you, not as kind as you, not as interesting as you. This confuses you all the more as to why would they select that individual over you. And if you want to understand more about that, you should watch my video, Why the Narcissist Downgrades. But this is about why does that narcissist keep going to the affair partner? And it is because that person has been identified as your potential replacement in that. They're seen as somebody that can be easy to control, that will fountain with fuel, that they have plenty of character traits and residual benefits, just in the way that you were viewed by the narcissist at the outset of your relationship with them. The narcissism then causes the narcissist to focus on that individual because the narcissism sees that they're catering to the prime aims and potentially may do so more effectively than you. Remember, you're being viewed most of the time through the lens of being painted black. The other person is being viewed through the lens of being painted white, which means even if they're not as physically attractive as you, they are still seen as better looking than you because of the painted white view and the painted black view. Everything that's good about you is now seen as bad. Everything about them is seen as good. Therefore, for instance, the narcissist may always have liked the fact that you were curvaceous, now, the narcissist criticizes your curvaceousness because it's seen through the lens of being painted black and instead has gone for somebody that is, has the physical attributes of a stick of celery and that's because the narcissism causing him to see that person viewed as painted white deems that to be more attractive. It isn't about the narcissist actually objectively finding somebody who has a more flatter figure more attractive than a curvaceous individual, or the other way around. It's simply what is viewed through the lens of white or black becomes then attractive to that individual. Thus, somebody who perhaps is a bit flat-chested is viewed as attractive when painted white. When they're painted black, their flat-chestedness is used against them, and they're criticised for it. The fact that the man has a large nose when he's painted white, it's a noble nose, an imperious nose. The woman likes it. When he's painted black, he's called Pinocchio and said that he's got a big hooter. But the fact that the narcissist homes in on this individual again and again and again is because the narcissism deems that they are potentially a viable replacement of the intimate partner primary source and therefore is causing the narcissist to want to bring this intimate partner secondary source under control so that they become a candidate for your replacement. This doesn't always happen and it's sometimes the case that the affair can rumble on for years because whilst that individual ultimately isn't decided on as being a replacement for you, thus no disengagement trigger, they still cater to the prime aim sufficiently well that there's no point in letting them go. Thus, the narcissist keeps you in place as the intimate partner primary source because there's no disengagement trigger. 
but continues to have this affair running on for years because whilst that individual isn't sufficient to replace you, they're also too good to get rid of and thus the narcissist wants to have their cake and eat it. Thus, the narcissist undertakes an affair because the narcissism deems that it's allowed to do so because the shackles are off in terms of preventing him from doing so vis-a-vis -vis your relationship. There's nothing stopping him if the narcissism deems that there's a suitable target to have an affair with. And that target is the person that is chosen again and again because they cater to the needs of the narcissist effectively enough that it's worth returning to them repeatedly with the potential that they may well replace you. Sometimes that happens, sometimes it does not. And that is why a narcissist has an affair. It's nothing to do with being broken or feeling unappreciated. That isn't the actual reason. That is what the narcissism tells the narcissist to say to provide an explanation, a rationale, a reason for their infidelity. Sometimes it can't come up with anything. Hence the narcissist will say, I don't know why I did it. In other instances, it's I can't help it, which is an abrogation of responsibility. In other instances, you made me have an affair. Blame shifting. You've changed. Therefore, it's your fault. Blame shifting. You're not meeting my needs. It's your fault. Blame shifting. She's interested in me. You're not. It's your fault. Blame shifting. It's not love. It's just sex. Well, although the narcissist may not realise that, they're telling the truth because they can't love anybody through an absence of emotional empathy. But it's not just about sex. Sex is the means of getting to the prime aims. It's about the fact that that person is viewed as attractive for the prime aims, as seen by the narcissism, and you are fair game to cheat on because there is nothing stopping the narcissist from doing so because the narcissist has no sense of obligation, no sense of decency, no sense of compassion or care or emotional empathy for you. Thus, you will be fed a reason which is either nowhere near the truth or is a half-truth as to why the narcissist has cheated and had an affair, but the actual reason why the narcissist has an affair is, one, there is nothing any more stopping him from or her from doing so in the relationship with you, and two, that person is deemed suitably appropriate enough for the narcissist to keep interacting with. It's a little bit like going back and drilling from the same oil field again and again, either with a view to potentially replacing you, or if that doesn't happen, because the affair partner is sufficiently decent enough vis-a-vis -vis the prime aims to keep interacting with them. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.